guys. Uh, today I have for you um, an overview of my Scar H um, or Mark 17, however you want to call it. Um, I did a review on this on the VFC a while ago. Um, so if you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description. Um, and then hopefully in the next week or two, um, I'll have a review up of the VFC versus the D Boys. Um, just kind of going over what's different externally um, a little bit of internal stuff too uh, as my friend uh, did pick up a D boys uh, this is a VFC um, this is pretty much its final configuration at least for me uh, there's a few minor differences but I'll get into those um, or minor changes we'll get into those as we go along um, so if you watch my uh, SR25 overview video. A lot of the accessories on here you'll see um, are the same uh, from that platform. I really don't want to, I can't really justify spending uh, money on the same thing when I already have it. Uh, anyway, from the stock, yeah, your typical uh, SCAR stock, I haven't changed anything out with that. Um, I really like the SCAR plat or the SCAR stock in general. I like the cheek um, weld adjustment, um, etc. Uh, these two pieces of tape here, um, you'll actually see that on, a, on quite a few um, scars nowadays. Uh, on the real steel, that is for, it, it's for keeping this cheek piece actually in place. Um, apparently, after a while, that kind of, um, I don't know, wears down or something, and it'll just kind of flop around. Um, so that's to keep it in place. Um, so yeah. Um, The SCAR platform, I guess I'll kind of start there. Uh, it's honestly, it's one of, if not my favorite platforms out there. Um, I just like uh, the robustness to them. Um, I like, I just like the design. It just feels right to me. Um, and it's pretty much everything you want in a small platform or relatively small, uh, as in like carbine length platform. Um, I do have some gripes about it, but again, I'll get into that in a little bit. Moving up here, I have my standard SCAR flip-up sight. I have the standard uh, front flip-up as well for the SCAR. Um, for optic, I have a Spectre DR. Um, this is the four times version. This will probably get uh, dusted or painted sometime, um, but who knows. Same thing with the barrel extensions, but getting ahead of myself. Um, selector switches. I know Magpul makes uh, another selector switch for this. Um, I haven't swapped those out yet. I haven't used them or tested them, so I don't know how they work, but apparently they work well. Um, that's one of the downfalls to the SCAR platform, in my opinion, um, at least in the Airsoft version, is that kind of, while they do function, if you don't like push down on both of them, uh, there is kind of a little bit of delay or that they're not lined up perfectly if you're not pushing them at the same time. So the remedy that I usually will go with my thumb and my index finger and just select them together. Uh, so yeah, simple fix. Um, moving forward, um, I run the bolt or, or the yeah the charging handle on the left side of the gun. It is interchangeable. Um, that's just how I like it. Uh, one of the things I really like about the SCAR platform is that it has the locking bolt catch. Um, that is for both changing uh, changing your hop up when you need it or just you know it's just a, a cool feature and the SCAR the, the bolt or the spring behind the bolt it, it's pretty strong and so you get a nice satisfying noise when you release it. Um, on this side of the gun, you'll see here that it does have an ambi mag mag release. Um, if you watched my SCAR or my SR25 overview, you'll know that I do not like those. Um, on this, I'm actually I'm all right with it. It's still not my favorite, but I can live with it. On the SR25, there is no, there's nothing uh, kind of obstructing that from being hit when you don't want it to. Um, on this, however, on the SCAR, you have this kind of rounded, um, 
this rounded plastic piece that's molded into the receiver. Um, and that is kind of extended and it's not directly covering the mag release, but it, it, it does provide a little buffer. Um, so when it is resting against your gear or something, it's not as likely to be bumped and have your mag drop. Um, you'll notice if you're familiar with the SCAR family or airsoft wise that I do have a Magpul 20LR PMAG in here. Um, for those wondering, it does require some modification for these to work. Uh, I'll get some footage and throw it in here, but uh, essentially all you have to do is mod down or sand down the kind of the uh, the ridge or little rib that runs down the back of the magwell. You can either do that or you can actually grind down a little slot kind of in the mag if you're not comfortable or don't want to tamper with the lower receiver. Um, otherwise, your standard SCAR mag right here will work just fine. Um, these, will, these will still work with uh, the modification done, but they are a teeny bit looser than if you do not do the mod to the actual receiver of the gun. Um, so anyway, I'll post the footage of that so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, up here, I have a black uh, Magpul RVG. Um, black because I got it for free, so I can't really complain, and I'm not going to go out and spend money for a different color. Um, it does its job. Um, I really like the RVG. I, it's one of my favorite foregrips I've used. Um, I highly recommend them. So yeah. Um, moving up here to the right side of the gun, I have a replica Surefire Scout light um, with a presser switch running to the left side of the gun. Um, it's running to the left side of the gun rather than say taped to here. Uh, it's just because of how I hold the gun. Um, I tend to hold it kind of in this manner. Um, so my thumb is resting above uh, the rail on this side. So it's easier for, easy for me to uh, press down and activate when I need it. Um, up here you have, or I have a dummy uh, PEC-15. Uh, this is just for looks. It's non-functioning, so whatever. Um, for those of you wondering, uh, the Spectre DR in this, you can see the uh, kind of the, the very top of this when you're looking through here. Um, it is kind of annoying. Um, and that is another one of my gripes about the SCAR, is that while there is a very long top rail for mounting any kind of optic you want, there's limited side rails. Um, I wouldn't really put a PEC-15 on the bottom. I'm, I guess you could, but it wouldn't be something I would do. Um, so th there's just limited rail space for this to go somewhere else if you're running a flashlight or a sling mount, which I'll get to in a second over here. Um, so that is kind of one of my one of my gripes about this. There are options for getting kind of like a, a PWS rail extension thing. Um, I thought about it, but again, it's just money, and I don't really need I don't really need it. I can live with the sight picture. Um, barrel extension. This is your uh, longer barrel extension, I think, for this car. There might be a longer one. I'm not sure. Um, up here, I have kind of a standard. Um, I think it's a like a quick detach um, bird cage kind of style flash header for like a night's armament suppressor. Uh, that will be changing once I uh, decide to finally spend the thirty or so dollars for the correct flash header, which is stupid. BFC, if you're watching this. Come on, man. Um, anyway, uh, so that will change. Uh, the extension will be painted, but whatever. Um, for those of you that are familiar with the BFC and D-Boys, you'll notice that this gas block is black. Um, the D-Boys gas block is black. The BFC is uh, kind of like a gray color. Um, this is actually this is actually a D-Boys gas block. The previous owner, he was missing his or something, and so he bought a friend's spare D-Boys one. Um, mine's painted, so I don't really care. But whatever. Um, if you haven't noticed, I don't know how well the resolution is. Uh, this is painted. Um, it's kind of it kind of has your 
Afghanistan and back look, if you will. Um, it is a, it is a tan model, but it's painted tan and brown and whatever to just kind of give it that added added look. I guess there's really no other reason. Um, over here, like on my SR25, I have this. Uh, I believe it's. I want to say gear sector, but I think that's wrong. Um, but but it it's a sling mount. It's quick to attach. Um, and then on top of it, I didn't know this. I was, a buddy of mine um, mentioned it in the previous video. Is that this is actually a, a you can mount your scout light on top of this, and it kind of gives you a slimmer profile um, to your standard scout mount. Um, the reason it's not over there is, like I said. I run my thumb up here, and because there's not a whole lot of room on this scar uh, for rails and stuff, I can't I can't really put the scout light up here um, and then have my thumb in a comfortable position for me. Um, so I do have it on the center mount on this side. Um, there's really not much else to say. Uh, like I said, the scar H or Mark 17 platform. It's one of my favorites. I highly recommend them. Uh, they're pretty. E they're fairly easy to work on. Uh, they are a, kind of a pain in the butt the first few times, uh, just because you have a bunch of smaller moving parts with these AMB selectors. Um, but other than that, they're, they're great. They're super easy to work on. You can split the receiver, take the stock off, take the uh, outer and inner barrel off really quickly. Um, so that's great. Uh, anyway, if you have any questions, comments, um, feel free to post them. If you haven't already, uh, please subscribe if you want to. Um, yeah, uh, this sling, it's a VTAC uh, wide padded sling and multicam. In case you're wondering, um, that pretty much wraps it up. So again, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube crap. Um, yeah, thanks.